We're just about a week away from opening day and it's a great time to do a recap of short form movement. It's what I constantly refer to in my Substack and in these videos. And if you already know short form movement, there's something in this video for you. Just jump to the section called what's next for pitch plots. And even if you know short form movement, I actually recommend just watching everything because maybe it'll make you think of things a bit differently. Short form movement is the language of pitching. Pitchers and coaches use it daily to understand what they're doing to the ball. It's the output of these things you see all the time in spring training videos called trackman units. We're just gonna see short form movement referred to more and more as the years progress in baseball. And yet I still run into people who aren't entirely comfortable looking at pitch plots and understanding what they're seeing. The issue with that I think stems from an understanding of the center of a short form movement pitch plot. The center of the plot is a 0-0 pitch, often called a bullet slider or gyro slider. It has 0 inches of horizontal break and 0 inches of vertical break. In short form movement, we're taking gravity out of the equation, so that bullet or gyro slider is dropping only because of the downward force of gravity and nothing else. Another way to visualize this pitch is to think about a football spiral or think about how a bullet spins out of a gun due to the rifling of a barrel. Why are those two things spinning on their way to the target? They're spinning to stabilize flight, stabilize the trajectory of the projectile towards a target. That's why in theory, these gyro sliders are easier for pitchers to command. It may seem weird that a pitch has zero vertical and zero horizontal break, but remember, we're not considering gravity at all here. So because of how that bullet ball or gyro slider spins, none of that spin is moving the ball in a way that deviates from our gravity ball or our bullet slider, and thus we get a zero zero pitch. From that zero zero point, you can get to any other pitch in baseball by thinking about the force being imparted on the ball at release that deviates from that bullet spin. A fastball, for example, on average has 16 inches of vertical break. Due to the pitcher imparting backspin on the ball, it rises 16 inches relative to our bullet slider that drops only because of gravity. Fastballs have backspin, so they're up here on our plot. Curveballs, on the other hand, have topspin, so they end up here on our plot. They drop more than the effects of gravity alone because of how that topspin is imparted. Sliders generally have side spin, so they move laterally, and they have a subtle amount of topspin or backspin depending on the shape. So they end up close to this zero inch vertical line, oftentimes above, oftentimes below. Things get a bit hairy when we talk about sinkers. I get why most people think they should be over here on our pitch plot. They sink, right? But 90% of sinkers in baseball are actually here on our plot, above that zero inch of vertical line. This is because almost all sinkers have some kind of backspin to them. When you look at the release of a sinker, this starts to make sense. The pitcher is still imparting backspin on the ball. They're just behind the ball. So think of them as sinking more than a four-seam fastball or dropping more than a four-seam fastball rather than actually having a crazy amount of depth like a curveball. That leads to a pretty basic concept that as you move down on our pitch plot, you're adding depth to the pitch. It is dropping more the lower it is on a pitch plot. Another way to think about that zero zero pitch or bullet slider, and I've used this analogy before in a video about death balls, which is a crazy topic I encourage you to check out. Think about a third person shooter video game. The one I always refer to is Resident Evil 4. In the game, they give you a laser sight on your gun in order to see where your bullet would land if you were to fire. Imagine for any pitcher in baseball, they have that laser sight attached to the ball just as they release. If they were aiming down the center of the plate and throwing a gyro slider, where would that ball end up? Hopefully you said right over the center of the plate. If they maintain that release trajectory and were instead throwing a fastball, where would the pitch end up? Hopefully you said up here. The thing with pitching is that aiming isn't easy. You may think you're aiming here in a perfect spot for your slider to end up right on the shadow of the zone, but as you move your body really fast through the kinetic chain, your laser sight or release trajectory actually ends up over here. So that pitch ends up way over here. That's a key to consider. The plot is fixed to the end of your laser sight or your release trajectory, and it moves based on the change in that release trajectory. 
That's how we calculate short form movement. So when you hear that a slider backs up, an analyst or a player isn't actually talking about the pitch moving to the pitcher's arm side. The more accurate description of the scenario is that the laser sight, the end of that laser sight got moved at release to over here and the pitch then moved normally and instead of ending up on the outer third, ended up in the middle of the plate. In other words, a backup slider is just a missed location slider. It's not actually moving any differently. I know that's a lot of info and I kind of hope you hung with me there and understand it to some extent, or at least the analogy I gave maybe increased that understanding from 10% to 15%. The next evolution of pitch plots is to think about how seams affect a pitch. For example, most teams are looking internally at plots that tell you how the pitch would move if the seams weren't a factor, and then what the resulting movement is because of the seams of the baseball. This is why it makes sense that four seamers and sinkers are released essentially the same for most pitchers, and the seams of the ball do most of the work. They would probably end up with the same movement if seams weren't involved, but because of the ball's orientation, they actually end up here and over here. Complex, I know, this is likely a topic for another day, but I often think by explaining more advanced concepts, it helps unlock more basic ones that I just reviewed. Now that you're an expert in pitch plots, let's take a look at what I call the fingerprint of pitchers. A lot of the time when I look at a pitcher for the first time, I jump to their pitch plot and I take a look at what they're throwing and where their shapes end up. And what you'll notice over time is that a lot of guys who throw in certain ways end up with very similar shapes. So let's dig into what some of those differences are and what some of the overarching themes are from pitch plot to pitch plot. The first fingerprint we will look at is what most people call north-south pitchers. They're defined by having pitch plots that have very little glove side or arm side movement. They hug the zero inch of horizontal movement line. They often cut their fastball slightly, which means it doesn't have as much arm side movement as the average four seam fastball. They often throw from a higher release or arm angle, which causes them to be behind the ball more rather than on the side of it. And as a result, you get this very vertical plot. Tyler Glass now, as you're seeing right here, is a great example of this. He throws a four seam at 96 plus, a slider at 90, and a curveball at 83. They all hug that vertical line. Nothing in his mix averaged more than three inches of either arm side or glove side movement last year. Dylan Cease also has a very similar plot to Glass now. Three pitches, all hugging that zero inch of horizontal movement line, all of them separating by a good amount vertically and all of them hard. It's often difficult for these guys to pronate and therefore they are often limited in their changeup shape. And that's why their curveball is really important for them to mitigate damage to the opposite handedness of hitter. The complete opposite of that are your sinker slider guys. Their plots look like the north-south plots, just rotated 90 degrees. A good example of this is Logan Webb. He throws a sinker, changeup, and slider. They all hug the zero inch vertical movement line, separating by very little vertically. But he has a huge amount of separation horizontally between his pitches, nearly 30 inches between his slider and his sinker. These shapes are also a byproduct of his delivery. Where the north-south guys are pretty over the top, the sinker slider types are generally more sidearm. Therefore, they can't really create backspin on a ball well, and to get separation between their pitches, they do so horizontally. Tanner Houck of the Red Sox has a plot that looks a lot like Logan Webb's. He mixes in some cutters alongside his sinker and sweeper, which Webb doesn't do, and he's also throwing some four seams, especially late last year to left-handed hitters, so he's getting a bit more vertical separation but again, the base of his repertoire is very horizontal. Once you move away from high arm slot and low arm slot guys, the extremes, you end up with more basic three quarter deliveries, which opens up a ton of variation between pitch types. A lot of three quarter arm slot guys have bigger separation between their offerings and really mix up usage based on a hitter's handedness. George Kirby is a good example of this. He doesn't really have anything in the center of his plot where a cutter or our gyro slider would be but he is hitting a wider range of the plot, both vertically and horizontally than say a glass now or a Logan Webb. Grayson Rodriguez is a lot like this as well. He's throwing a similar mix to Kirby, touching a big range of shapes in this plot, a lot of separation between his pitches. Grayson primarily throws a slider for righties in his changeup to lefties. And again, he mixes in that curveball to help with opposite handed hitters. 
The last example I'll give relates to a left-handed pitcher. This whole video I've been touching on righties, but everything I've said applies to lefties as well. You just have to flip your brain to the other side of the plot, mirror it over this vertical axis. For example, a slightly different fingerprint than anything I've shown is Cole Reagan's. He has that same line going on with his mix that I talked about with Glasnow and Webb. It's just splitting our plot a bit differently. Everything he throws hangs around this diagonal line. This is a byproduct again of how his body moves. He's a very rotational pitcher. And these are the shapes that he gets to. A fastball and changeup that are pretty close in shape, cutter slider mixed in two, both of them around our bullet slider or gyro slider area. And then he has a curveball. It's pretty similar to Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola just doesn't really throw too much cutter or slider or anything in the center of our plot. If you're looking for short form movement publicly, there are a pair of places you can find it. The first is on Baseball Savant. You have to pop open their search table and we want to see, let's say, four seam shape. Go here, throw in vertical movement without gravity, alongside velocity, release height, and horizontal movement. And we'll just look at right-handed pitchers, hit search, and now you can see short form movement for all fastballs last year. The other place is to check out Alex Chamberlain's pitch leaderboard. If you buy him a coffee through this link, the table is downloadable. Otherwise, you can just go to the specs tab here, sort through whatever you're looking for in terms of pitch shape. And the big thing I like about this is that at the bottom, he has an average shape for every pitch type, which you can split based on handedness. I hope this video was useful. Again, I just don't think this topic is going away. This is how people in organizations think about pitching. If you were ever to go into a clubhouse and ask a pitcher about the shape of their pitch, some of them might be able to reference these exact numbers and say their pitch is say 18 and eight. So it has 18 inches of vertical movement and eight inches of arm side movement or horizontal movement. It also helps a lot in interacting with the coaches and asking why shapes have changed. Most of the time, those coaches will say it has to do something with the I hope this video was useful. At the end of the day, I just don't think this info is going anywhere. I think it's just gonna be referenced more and more. And therefore, I think it's pretty important to get at least a baseline understanding of this, or at least attempt to understand it, such that as further iterations and advancements come in the baseball space, this baseline knowledge is still there. And I don't really think it's going anywhere. If you were ever to hop into a clubhouse and talk to a coach about, say, why a pitcher's shape changed on an individual pitch, even if the classification didn't change. A lot of the time, what they'll mention is something happening in the pitcher's body. So the thing I'll emphasize is that I look at these pitch movement, short form movement metrics as almost an output. It's an output of how the pitcher is moving. You heard me reference that a bit in relation to the fingerprint of pitchers that I'm talking about. But at the same time, it's still really important. It's important because it's kind of the only output variable we have. I don't know if we'll ever get full biomechanic information on these pitchers. So we're always gonna be limited. There's always gonna be a black box unless you have a biomechanics degree on what's occurring in the body to result in these shapes. So for now, all we have is the ability to look at these shapes and try to understand what might be happening and how it's potentially helping or hurting a given pitcher. Questions, as always, let me know. I'm in the comments. I'm here to educate as much as I can, answer questions. I'll be down there and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching, as always.